Meet Vekovia's dwarf caiman, the world's smallest living crocodilian. Growing up to 5.2 feet and weighing 7 kilograms, this little alligator can be found in northern and central South America, and is known for having a high tolerance for cold water, but is the only crocodilian species observed not to employ a death roll when eating. This caiman is a far cry from its larger cousins, like the world's largest extant reptile, the saltwater crocodile, which can grow to 23 feet and weigh 4,400 pounds. But as the saying goes, there is always a bigger fish, and for the crocodile, Dillions, there were definitely some big ones. You might be thinking that the saltwater crocodile is large, but at just two tons, it's a lightweight at best compared to what used to exist throughout our prehistoric times. Not to be confused with crocodilomorphs, the crocodilian order first emerged in the late Cretaceous somewhere between 80 to 100 million years ago, dominating a semi-aquatic predatory niche along rivers, lakes and other large bodies of water is what gave this group of reptiles the necessary tools for survival, but also allowed some members to reach truly incredible sizes where not even the dinosaurs would be safe. Coinciding with the emergence of the crocodilians was the onset of the late Cretaceous, which began began 100.5 million years ago. America in this time was almost unrecognisable, being separated by the Western Interior Seaway. The seaway persisted for 34 million years and created a vast network of swamps and rivers which opened up the way for ecological niches suited to crocodilians. In 1858, geologist Ebenezer Emmons described two large teeth found in Bladen County, North Carolina, which he believed belonged to a large species of crocodilian. However, he assigned the teeth to Polypachodon, which at the time was believed to be a type of crocodilian genus, but was later identified to be a type of pliosaur. It wasn't until 1909 that William Jacob Holland described the species that would be Dinosuchus hatchery, but this description came at a cost. Dubbed the King of Collectors, John Bell Hatcher was a famous paleontologist responsible for discovering many dinosaurs such as Taurosaurus and Triceratops. Upon learning in 1903 that recovered fossil material belonged to a species of crocodilian, Hatcher immediately lost interest, instead favouring traditional dinosaur discoveries. Ouch. But in 1904, Hatcher passed away at just 42 years of age, and his colleague W.J. Holland described the fossils five years later, giving us Dinosuchus. And what an absolute unit this prehistoric crocodilian was. More closely related to alligators than true crocodiles, Dinosuchus emerged in the Campanian age of the late Cretaceous, but would look very recognisable and easily fit in today's world with a typical crocodilian body type, consisting of a large tail, short arms and legs, pancake belly and a large robust jaw filled with bone crushing teeth. The snout of Dinosuchus was broad like today's alligators and had a bulb-like bump at the tip of the snout, along with a set of two holes in the pre-maxilla located in front of the nares. This adaption is so unique, it's not seen in any other crocodilian relative alive or extinct. Let me know what you think this adaption could be used for, cause I got nothing. <laughs> the back of Dinosuchus was lined with thick osteoderms, creating a series of spikes along the spine and would have looked much like the extant saltwater crocodile. But these osteoderms were unusually larger and deeper than what we typically expect. It has been hypothesized that such an adaption served as a load-bearing reinforcement to accommodate the incredible size of Dinosuchus. This would have enabled Dinosuchus to walk on land, similar to today's crocodiles and alligators. For a comparison, extant anacondas when reaching 20 feet have great difficulty moving on land, and instead favour locomotion by river systems as their bodies are simply too big and energy consuming to lug around all day long. But you won't find that with Dinosuchus. The combined studies of phylogenetic analysis in 1999, the year before your parents panicked, and a recovered brain case in 2005, placed Dinosuchus as a basal member of Alligatoroidea, although an unlikely direct ancestor to extant alligators. This does however give insight into how Dinosuchus would have looked. Although quite similar in appearance to true crocodiles, one of the ways alligators today can be distinguished is by their interdigitated teeth. That is to say that the lower jaw teeth would fit into the upper jaw unlike crocodiles, which have exposed teeth. For Dinosuchus, only the fourth tooth of the lower jaw would be visible when closing the mouth. And speaking of closing the mouth, just how strong is this giant prehistoric 
fight force do you may ask? Arguably the only thing of real importance. But before we dive in, a quick refresh. Humans have a biting force of 150 newtons max. The largest apes alive, gorillas, have a bite force of 3420 newtons. Polar bears, the largest terrestrial predator, come in at 5000 newtons. The hippopotamus has the strongest bite force of any land animal at 8130 newtons. Going to our marine ecosystems, the alligator measures in at 13,172 newtons. The average Caucasian shark, ha! The largest great white shark at two and a half tons has been theorized to bite at 18,000 newtons. Good luck testing that one though. But in terms of confirmed numbers, the saltwater crocodile takes the crown with a bite force of 16,414 newtons. And with that out of the way, onto Dinosuchus. Effectively a saltwater crocodile only greatly scaled up, the minimum bite force of Dinosuchus is estimated to be 18,000 newtons, the same as a two and a half ton great white. The higher estimates come out at 100,000 newtons of force, which is quite big. An accurate bite force likely measures somewhere in between, depending on the size of the particular Dinosuchus during its growth. But with a bite force twice as strong as T-Rex, I can say with confidence this thing wasn't fucking around. And speaking of size, this brings us to our next point. The second most important thing when talking about giant prehistoric animals, just how big was this thing? For reference, a large American alligator measures in at 15 feet and 500 kilograms, and saltwater crocodiles measure in at 20 feet and 1.5 tons, taking their highest weight estimate. I say that because most saltwater crocs measured just under 20 feet typically only weigh 1 ton, so 1.5 tons is definitely the highest they can go. So just how big was Dinosuchus then? Well consider for a moment that a saltwater crocodile's skull can reach 32 inches or 81 centimeters, and compare that to Dinosuchus with a skull size of 147.5 centimeters or roughly 82% larger. Extrapolating from this, Dinosuchus is estimated to have reached 35 feet and over 6 tons using a regression equation based off the American alligator. A larger 39 feet and 8.5 tons estimate has been considered, which makes Dinosuchus the largest crocodilian to ever exist, that we know of, my god disclaimer. But this is likely an outlier, or rather Dinosuchus at its highest size estimates, as most fossil evidence points to 35 feet as the typical maximum size. But there is something you need to know. You see, there wasn't just one Dinosuchus, there was actually four of them, and not all of them were as big as you think. The first, as you know, is Dinosuchus hatchery. This species is poorly preserved and has been proposed to be transferred over to the more complete D. Rio Grandensis, which is where our 35 feet size estimates come. Come from. Another species D. rugosus found in Appalachia was considered nomendumium in 2020 with a new species D. schwimmeri being named. D. schwimmeri and D. rugosus are smaller with skull lengths of around 1 meter or 3.3 feet and have an estimated size ranging between 26 to 33 feet and between 2.5 to 5 tons in weight. Comparing Dinosuchus to other giant prehistoric crocodilians, we can see they all share a similar body plan, but the larger skull size and main body section of Dinosuchus puts it at the top of the list, with Parasaurus being a close second. At 35 feet, the size of Dinosuchus is quite respectable, being able to compare to larger marine predators such as Tylosaurus and Mosasaurus. These apex predators roamed the seas in the late Cretaceous and likely would have attacked Dinosuchus if they ever crossed paths. The habitat of Dinosuchus ranged across both sides of the Western Interior Seaway, with specimens being found in Utah, Montana, Wyoming, New Mexico, New Jersey, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, and North Carolina. Dinosuchus inhabited the many terrene environments made possible by the Western Interior Seaway. An estuary is defined as a partially enclosed coastal body of brackish water with at least one river system flowing into it. Although an estuary would connect to the open sea, it is unclear if Dinosuchus would have ventured into the open water like saltwater crocodiles have been known to do. And a quick note, brackish water refers to naturally occurring water that has a higher salinity than fresh water, but less though than seawater, and in between if you will. Today's alligators are 
known for inhabiting freshwater rivers, having an extreme intolerance for salt water. Saltwater crocodiles have salivary glands called salt glands, which are capable of excreting excess salt. However, such salt glands are completely absent or drastically reduced in alligators. This implies that Dinosuchus, although more closely related to alligators, still retained functioning salt glands and the loss of this adaption likely coincided with the recession of the western interior seaway, removing all viable saltwater habitats that a crocodilian would inhabit, while simultaneously any freshwater river system remained relatively untouched. With natural selection taking place over multiple generations, the value of functional salt glands was simply no longer necessary for survival. Now what did Dinosuchus eat, you may ask? The short answer is anything it bloody wanted to. As an apex predator, Dinosuchus had its choice of meal, and thanks to its similarities with modern crocodiles and alligators, we know that Dinosuchus employed a similar tactic of ambush predation along large bodies of water. Predation of large ornithopods, such as Critosaurus and other Hadrosaurids, would have been a common occurrence, but Dinosuchus also would have predated on marine turtles, such as Bothremis, and other large fish depending on its ecosystem. But given its size and role, the Dinosuchus would have predated on anything sufficient that happened to cross its paths. Being reptiles, birds, or mammals, literally anything would be on its menu. And addressing a point some of you may have, did Dinosuchus and T-Rex coexist? The Tyrannosaurus Rex was the apex predator of America in the late Cretaceous, 72.7 to 66 million years ago, possessing the strongest bite force of any terrestrial animal. Dinosuchus reigned in the Campanian Age, which ended 72.1 million years ago, creating an overlap of 600,000 years between these two apex predators. But from what I know, there is no fossil evidence confirming any behavior between these two species. But if the two ever met, rule of thumb is, bigger is better. The Tyrannosaurus Rex could reach 43 feet and weigh 8 tons, a Dinosuchus on land would be no match for a T-Rex, but the inverse would be true with ambush predation from Dinosuchus along large river systems, likely resulting in the two apex predators avoiding one another as a confrontation is simply not worth it. If you enjoyed the video, then support the channel by hitting the like and subscribe button. I appreciate all the support you give me. Stay tuned for more content, but either way, thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I will see you in the next video. One of the ways alligators today can be distinguished is by their inter is by their inter is by their inter is by their interdigitated teeth. That is to say that okay, that's rubbish.